Hello, and welcome to this week's webinar. My name is Qasim Al Rafi. I am the Power BI Specialist and Customer Support Rep for Neo Systems. Uh, this week's webinar is about Power BI, specifically navigation and configuration, and we'll go through a couple steps like what is Power BI, Excel versus Power BI, how to navigate it, preview of table page, the preview of the relationship page, how to connect your data set. We'll be going over SQL for our cloud users, some extra tidbits here and there. And at the very end, we'll open it up for open Q&A. Uh, if you guys do have any Q&A questions as the webinar goes on, feel free to uh, put them whenever you want, and I believe we'll have some open mic time at the end of the webinar. So I'll just share my screen here. So why Power BI? Now, some of you may have already seen the benefits of Power BI with some of the customizations we've made for you, um, but since this is a very, very basic webinar, we'll just be discussing the basics and why would you choose this over Excel or Power Pivots or even SSRS at the end of the day, right? Now, all these names I just dropped is more like Tableau and other reporting services, but since we're a Microsoft company and our entire portal or entire app is based off of Dynamics 365. We're looking at really integrating all that data together in one convenient real-time location. So if you don't have Power BI knowledge and you're still on that um, Excel grind, you'll, of, you'll often write an advanced find, um, go into a report, run that report, and you'll export that into Excel, maybe go into Power Pivot and start fiddling with it in there. Now with Power BI, um, you actually have a SQL replicated database. Um, an online, uh, an OData feed database. You have these these options to just plug into your plug in your data into the real time, and actually start showing stunning visuals, live data, and a much more friendly UI filter um, compared to what Power Pivot and the older UI of Excel really shows. Um, or even if you still want to play with your Excel tables and everything, and you're comfortable with those reports, you can still run those reports and actually import them into Power BI and go from there. Now, an advanced find has a limited amount of columns that can be exported. Power BI seamlessly takes your database and provides you with your entire data set at your disposal. Um, we'll be making a LinkedIn post or a newsletter post about this in the future, um, but for the time being, there's that link on screen. Now, this is actually Power BI. I just inputted an image there. Cool. So, this is after a couple hours of making it, you can get into this advanced section of all these visuals and all these and all that data set pushed into one. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get into how to make this exact data table or this exact dashboard because it's a more advanced uh, uh, webinar for that time for the time being. But currently, we'll be discussing the basics. Let's expand the home table. Now, the first thing you probably notice is it's very Excel. It's very Word. It's very PowerPoint. Uh, UI uh, resemblance where you have this home tab here and just like Excel and Word, it looks at the most used buttons and it pushes it into there. Now the ones to note from this uh, from this tab is this get data button where you have the option to take a second to load here. Look at the most common data sets so you can import them. So obviously Excel is one of the most used, SQL and OData for your on-prem clients. Um, you can obviously go into more, and if you look in the more section, there's and and then honestly an endless possibility, especially with the blank query, but you can go text, JSON, you can actually go into web, right? You can go into wiki probably if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. There's so many things you can just pull into Power BI and start playing around with. Um, like I said, for the for the clients on cloud, you will connect your database with SQL. For our clients on prem, you will connect your database using OData. And for login information, feel free to message support at neosystems.com. The another button I'll get into is edit queries button. Um, I'm not going to actually open up the pop up because it is on the more advanced side, and this will allow you to basically edit edit your data set. Um, Power BI has data computing uh, capabilities in the back end, and luckily the section is very user friendly. Uh, it takes what it sort of takes a stab at SQL, um, but it's honestly you don't have to be too techy to get into it. 
Um, it's a lot of right click. It's a lot of here's a button in your face kind of work. Now, obviously you can get into the more advanced like writing up M or DAX, but for the most part, it's very UI friendly. Um, you'd go into there if you want to duplicate columns, clear a column, create a relationship and more, but that'll probably be a webinar in itself because of how in depth you can really get into it. The other buttons to mention are this new measure button. Now Power BI, much like Excel, works off of a language called DAX. Um, I don't know what the Excel uh, like language is really called, but it's very similar where in Excel you would go equal sum or equals count, um, where in Power BI once this loads, it's very similar verbiage like some, but just a bit, instead of using columns, using tables and uh, tables and columns. So instead of going sum A2, you'd go sum forms, form type, for example. Uh, once this loads up here. Obviously, the faster your computer, the, the better, you're gonna, the funner time you can have with Power BI. If you're on an older machine, you might want to ask your department for a newer one. Um, now what a new measure does, compare if it doesn't load compared to a new column is you'd write up that um, count form types by forms for example all up in a nice uh, nice formula and instead of populating a new column which would take space and time to query it's just a quick little uh, aggregated measure an aggregated calculation where if you plug it into any part of your power bi it's just quick to load whereas a column is very similar to new measure but you'll actually create the column and populate the, the rows. That way you can see if your measure is working properly. Now, if you're making a long if else statements, that's sort of where I'd use the column instead. So you can double check your work and make sure that everything is going through correctly. I'm not sure why I didn't load. Sorry about that. But if you get into this new quick measure, a pop up should open up, right? And this is as simple as clicking, going into addition, for example. You want to see, you want to add, let's say, form number, or let's go form count by honestly form count. And that'll run the measure for you just like that. It's very simple, and a lot of these um, are very easy to use. And not, not every um, calculation is there a lot of it. You'll have to actually just Google yourself how to do it if you can't figure out the, the language of DAX. But Microsoft tries to keep this updated with the most commonly asked formulas. If you have a calculation and you want to see posted, you can honestly just message the forums or message uh, uh, Microsoft and see what see if it's popular enough, they'll actually post it themselves. Cool. The last one I want to add is this publish feature. Um, that gets into the Power of BI reporting services, which would be its webinar on its own. Um, but once you finish this webinar, or once you finish this dashboard, sorry, I misspoke, um, you'd actually publish it to Power BI reporting services, and that's where other Power BI licensed users will actually be able to access the dashboard, um, make changes themselves if you have, give them permission to, um, slice and filter up to their heart's content. Um, you do need that Power BI license, um, the pro license, sorry, to view the dashboard, um, which I don't know the cost of it off the top of my head, but that's something that you have to discuss internally and saying, okay, who actually needs one? And there's other ways to get around that, but we'll get into that later. Now this view tab, this is when you're basically finished the report. Um, as you can see in the background, I have these grid lines. That's just so I know that everything was lined up properly. Once you remove it, you'll see what the Power BI actually looks like. You have the options to snap everything to the grid. So if you want it lined up to there, you push and pull as much as you really want. This is basically done when you're, this is basically, you basically use this tab when you finished your dashboard, right? So you want to make sure that everything is proper. And once you finish, you lock it. That way, if you ever accidentally click, you'll never move it and all your work is not gone, right? The last thing to mention about this tab is that there's a phone layout. So let's say you have a lot of executives who um, are on the run. They want to keep up to, up to date on their data. You just design it this way by dragging and dropping the visuals you made previously. You can resize pretty easily. Everything's locked right now, so I'll unlock it. You can resize pretty easily and it goes from there. Back to the desktop layout. And then all these other things are just playing around with. You can sync slicers. I'll get into what a slicer is in the future. You can see how many um, items there are in your dashboard. You can select individual ones. 
this is very useful if there's this line, for example, is pretty hard to click. You can just click shape here and it for auto selects that one for you. You can see how long it takes your query to run. Uh, this is mainly used for filters or, um, or slicers. You start recording, click it, and it does it by itself. Finally, the bookmarks pane. If you have a bookmark in here, I'll show you what goes from there. But this is all like you're just playing around with it and you go from there. Now the modeling tab, um, this is where you do most of the calculations. Um, a lot of the buttons are repeated from the home table, such as new measure, new column, and new table. Excuse me. Um, the biggest use for this tab is right here. This data type format, dollar sign, percent sign, decimal autoing, um, very similar to Excel. Let's say you export your data, you import your data, and you notice that form count for some or form ID for some reason is in a number column instead of a text uh, column. This is where you just click form type, go into there, or click the form type name. So, for example, forms. form type ID, you'll see that it's text like it's supposed to, but if you want to change it to whole number, date and time, true or false, if you want to change the format to make it uh, anything else. So sometimes you'll see, like data category, for example, if it's a web URL, if an image URL, things like that, right? Um, and there's default summarization thing, if it's a number and you want to drag it onto a visual, you want to make sure it always summarizes or, or sums instead of averages, you'd click the sum button over here. Now, the other thing to mention um, is this manage roles button. Let's pop it up. Let's say you're a multinational company and you want to make sure that the Canadian workers can only see the Canadi uh, Canadian data. You have the power to just go click create. You call this role Canada. You go accounts and you'd go accounts. Accounts, account name. That's a bit of a language thing. Account name equals Canada. Obviously, it's a bit harder than that, but that's sort of the idea behind it. That's good if you have a lot of if you have a lot of people who are going through confidential data. You want to make sure that the CEOs can see what the CEOs want to see, and the managers see what the managers want to see, and so on and so forth. My test loads up, and everything else. Honestly, like. You, it's going to be it's hard to break your power bi report so just playing around with power bi is the best way to learn um, and that's basically the three main tabs you have this format um, and data drill which aren't often used but we'll get into that in future webinars now on the left here you see these three icons you have this relationship or this dashboard uh, page this table page and this relationships page so starting with the T dashboard page obviously you have the dashboard that's written up but then you have this filters pane this visualizations pane and this fields pane now as you can see the filter here on this card saying if the classification equals lost time only only summarize that data right but let's say i wanted to do it i wanted to filter it by form date I can as easy as drop dragging and drop it into there and filtering by form date. I'm not going to do it because I might mess up the Power BI, but we'll go from there. You can advanced filter, so saying contains lost time. You can basic filter it by saying select all and then only choose lost time. All but none. All but one, sorry. Um, or you could do a top five, top ten um, compared to another value. Now, what if what a filter is, is it's basically a hard coded, um, hard coded filter, whereas we'll get into slicers in a bit, but you can actually just add any data field you want here, as many as you want, and that only affects this visual, it can affect this entire page, or it can affect every page. Now the, the usage of this compared to slicers, we'll get to slicers in a second, is that it does, this does not affect this this doesn't take up any space whereas if you wanted to see a slicer uh, this is the visualizations page but if i want to take a slicer for example slice it by form type id as you can see this you'd have to find a place in your dashboard to actually put the slicer 
compared to taking that same form type ID, dragging it to the data field and having this on the side. Now, if you do not have a Power BI Pro license and you're viewing this through an embedded link, which I'll get into in the future, you won't have this capability to, to filter. You only have to use a slicer. So understanding your company's needs and wants is where you decide between a filter or a slicer. Like that. Now this visualizations page is, pane is very simple. Um, obviously you can tell it's bar charts, pie charts, donut charts. Um, but the beautiful part about it is it's really just drag and drop. So right now you can see this 50% is, is using the card visualization. If for some reason you want to see the bar chart, you just click it and it changes it. Obviously it's a bit short right now, so. Right, 50% of that is that kind of thing. Go back to card. If um, this is a more advanced table, but for this donut chart here, you can see the legend is classification name as the value is the count of it. If by accident I put the classification name in details, obviously this gets broken up. It's as easy as dragging it back in there, right? And this is where you can change the counts into count distinct, sum, average. This is where you're basically playing with visual to make sure that all your data is being presented properly. Finally, the fields table just shows all the tables and columns, very self-explanatory. This is the tables page, just on this left side over here, clicking this, and this will show you um, every table you have and the columns with it. So as I mentioned earlier, if you make a new column and you call it counts of, um, counts of accounts, for example, you'll actually just see the counts of accounts beside it. That's a bit of a tongue twister, but you'll see it all there. Um, whereas a new measure will not populate this. If you want to see forms, it will showcase you anything that has the word form in it, as well as on the tables and all the columns within that table. So even though day does not contain the word forms, it is in the forms table, therefore it still shows. The last thing to mention with this is if I want to filter the name. So if I only want to see AAA contracting. Hit OK. Now obviously you get that one line and it gives you all the information there. One, two, three, somewhere Calgary. But when you go into here and let's say you just make a simple table. You scroll up to accounts. Account ID, account number. You can look at name. You can either drag this into the visual here or just click the little check mark. Obviously that we only filtered out AAA contracting, but all the accounts still show. So don't worry about filtering here. It does not affect your dashboard. If you do filter in this edit query section though, it does affect your dashboard and that's something to, to, to keep note of. Hopefully that deletes. Cool. So that's the tables pane, very simple. Um, like I said, the one thing that you probably want to look at is the modeling uh, tab up here while you're working on it to make sure that the data types are what they need to be. Finally, you'll get into this behemoth, which is the relationships pane. Um, this takes probably the longest time to learn, especially if you're not coming from a technical background or a data, data analysis background. Um, but what this is saying is that it's going to be hard to zoom in and out here. But that this forms table has a one to many relationship with this form cause analysis and it filters both ways. Now, playing around with this and making it look nice is pretty challenging, but luckily the development team here at Neosystems, um, when you when you import your SQL database or your old data feed, the relationships are already created, so you don't have to play around with it too much. Um, I just personally went into this and made sure that I sort of know where everything is. So if I go up here, look at events, I know that events, everything regarding events are in this general area everything regarding procedures and procedure competencies in this area and so on, just so if there are any issues, you know where to lead. But this is a sort of a one-time setup. Um, there'll be errors along the way that you have to fix, but for the most part, we set this up for you once you do, um, once you do import your data. Now you can manually create um, any relationship. Obviously the ones that we give you are the ones you might need. But if you do ever need to create a new relationship, you can do this in two ways. 
So I'll delete this one here. By right clicking. Delete. While this is happening, I'll quickly explain what I'm doing. So all these IDs, as you can see, form ID, form type ID, form classification ID, these are going to be the um, unique keywords that connect the tables together. So if I want to make a relationship, I look at form ID and I drag it to form ID over here. And then a pop up will open up once that happens. Blue stuff, just in. And there we go, found it. <laughs> just takes a bit of, because uh, this database is so big, it takes a bit of time. Okay, it's loading, there we go. Perfect. Now Power BI automatically saw that there's a one-to-one -one relationship. If I need to change this to many for any reason, like you're duplicating columns in this table, um, you can do that by right-clicking here. So as you can see here, they did not link to the same ID that this form cause analysis ID and that form ID are two different column names. So you'd click on this line over here, click properties, You make sure that form ID is clicked instead of form cause. Now you send these two relationships. These two tables are related to this ID. Power BI automatically follows once many. You want to make sure it's active before it was both. I'll just go back into that. So what, what single and both means is that the forms table can only slice form cause analysis, whereas both say it can go either way. Uh, I like to start with single and then change to both as needed because it, it keeps queries quicker. So that's the idea behind relationships table. There's also this other managed relationships where if you, if let's say you add a new table in your SQL database or your old database, you can click that and just click auto detect relationships, which uh, Power BI will use its AI and do it for you. And now finally, the last part of our webinar here, I'll get you guys to um, connect to your SQL database. So you'll click get data. SQL Server. Pop up will open, hopefully. There we go. Now you'll put your server in. Now, if you have a, let's say you have your prod database or your test database, I like to just keep my whole server um, and not specify the database. That way, if I need to go back and forth within the same report, I have the option to. Um, what import does is you're importing your entire data set into Power BI. Um, if you don't have too big of a data set, this is fine. Whereas direct query, this would be more or less you playing up, you playing with your SQL management service in the background, understanding where all the tables are, understanding how everything links up. And that will make you, that can help you edit the queries quicker because your data set isn't being imported. So it just depends on your comfortability of uh, data manipulation. I personally prefer import because I like to see what I'm working with. You'll hit OK. Now a pop up will usually load and it'll tell you how to connect. I might have already connected to this database, so I might just skip that. But if it does ask you to connect, you would just use your database credentials. Um, if you don't know what those are, once again, go to support at neosystems.com. As you can see here, you have the server name with the database name and then all your tables. All right. Now, the th thing to mention is that here on Neo Systems, we give you guys proper views. So this form fields table is filled up with everything and gl global option medicine data um, is included in this view. Whereas if you go down a bit, you can actually see this iTrack form field table. This is where the raw, da raw data is coming from the SQL application. This is if you can't 
find something that you need in the form fields view, you can either message customer support and we can add that for you. It's a very simple fix. Um, or we can actually, you can actually merge the queries through this edit queries button um, just to make sure that all your data is properly being conveyed. So once you can collect it, select it, you can load it. It'll tell you what's in the table, just so you know you're pulling out the right one. I know the naming of iTrack isn't the best, so a form type and a form, what's the difference, or form, form item list and a form checklist, so on and so forth. Obviously, it's a truncated, um, so you won't see the entire data set, and you can load and it pops up on the right over here. Cool, so that was the entire webinar. It's the very it's the basics of Power BI. Um, this is really just scratching scratching the surface. There's so much that can, more that can be said about Power BI, but once you start playing with it, once you start understanding it more, obviously uh, we're here to help if you guys do have any questions. Uh, you'll really become a master of it with no time. And this little title page here is actually part of our out of box Power BI. If you guys want more information on that, feel free to message Neo Systems. Our support at Neo Systems, we can get you in touch with that as well. Perfect. Are there any questions? Cool. If you guys are watching this on YouTube or LinkedIn or even on our website, um, feel free to message support on Neo Systems for any questions and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Um, I'll give up, up for two more minutes in case there are any questions last minute. Other than that, have a great day.